Hi, my name is Kazim Ali, and I'm going to read a chapter out of my new book, um, Bright Felon, Autobiography and Cities. Each chapter is um, the name of a city that I have lived in, in my life, and this chapter is called Beacon. You wouldn't think I would have wanted a beacon, rather to find myself in the wilderness on my own. But I did. I always did. Could there have been someone else like me? Not one thing, not another, barely able to choose. A poet, a Muslim, and of a particular persuasion. When I knew someone like me, I barely knew him, and we couldn't bring ourselves to speak of the one thing we needed to speak to each other about. Silence stretched between us, taught as sin. In 2004, Marco and I moved down the river to Beacon, New York. Named for the signal fires placed on top of each mountain in a chain running from New York City to Albany. So if either city fell to the British, the insurgents at the other end would know about it. I placed signal fires up and down each street, so anxious was I to belong somewhere. When I first arrived, I quickly constructed my life, visiting the post office, the bank, the coffee shop, the yoga studio, the used bookstore, all nearly every day. We lived on the third floor, our apartment overlooking one of the municipal parking lots next to a theater long since abandoned and now colonized by grackles, thousands of them shouting. It had to be explained to me that the sound of grackles was considered unattractive. I found music in the noise. Also, a badger or some creature would walk over the neighboring rooftops onto our deck to eat Marco's rare succulent plants. A crowd of carpenter bees arrived in the spring to devour the wooden deck. I was not content with Marco's explanation that they were not interested in me, so at last he hung deer net around the balcony. The morning glory and other climbing plants soon made use of the net and we were encased in shadowy green. Years later, I would be stung again and again by a crew of distressed yellow jackets. Marco picked them off me one by one. I passed masjid e rashid the storefront mosque, every day on my way to the post office, where an older Arab man between the age of my mother and my father worked. He would occasionally ask about my background. When I told him I was Muslim, my name Kazim, he invited me to the mosque. When I did not appear, he would ask about it when I next went to the post office. Following one of the Islamic tenets, and join others to good deeds. Since I went in during working hours, he knew I could have made it to the Jummah prayers if I preferred to. Down next to the river, I went with Fanny to the Agnes Martin room, where suspended in time transfixed the river turns on itself, flowing down to the sea, also up from the sea, an uncertain place. I wrote it on paper, Five years before I drove out of the city north, it was a light place, painted white with the graphite marks on it. I had been there, the end of time. This place, space, bends around itself. Been there, looking through a painting like you look through a wall. In this way, sometimes people see heaven. The name of the place was Through. From the blank that only blank can give, a field without end. Looking away and then looking back into it, you could start to discern the landscape in it, the horizontal, a little autobiography littered on the surface, what it would have been like had I last been able to see. Bent into the syntax of what comes after what and what did what. 
always. You are either the one looking at the painting or you are the one who made the painting. Listen, hasn't it ever occurred to you? The ocean gathered together at a place on the horizon you could not discern. You always wanted to know that actual place. You could be he or I could be. Could that be the place where the river turns and returns where I quit my metaphor and make me? Unveiled, I want to go into the water, to the place at the horizon, place the gray of the ocean and the gray of the sky could not be separated from one another. Each are flames on a subway platform, getting on and off trains and burning ourselves to the ground, staring into a painting you can't forget. What are we then, signal fires? Who are we and when in time, bordered in amniotic grit? If we are in time, then we are events set into motion when and by whom. Only one room over the white blanketed fields are going to give way to black buttons, slipping themselves each into a hole, button you up. My body isn't itself anymore. Streams rush up one arm and down the other leg. Can you stand with arms overhead for a year or more? You could. December 13th, 1978. March 8th, 1983. Continue writing them in white, on black ink, in whatever language or whatever country. I will bend down and press my forehead to the earth. A brick went through the storefront window of Masjid -e Rashid. God whispers up from the earth, and I want to hear it. And believed I could hear it if I listened closely, if one foot is folded against the other, left on top, right against the earth, or only if I pronounce the syllables in the correct way. Though in Urdu a consonant is one way, in Arabic another. There is an Arabic consonant in the middle of my name I cannot pronounce. A vowel in my last name my throat cannot manage. Someone else with my name or my face in another country in the world living my life. He managed it without hurting anyone, without lying. I didn't lie, he said. I managed to skirt my way around the truth. But she asked you once, didn't she? She asked you once, once, one morning after opening your bedroom door. No, I only wish she asked me. She never asked me. Not until weeks later did she bring it up, by which point I was already too afraid to say anything. I can't even properly say my own name. You could set yourself aflame, your house aflame. The wire drawn from the street lamps in upper Manhattan, lamp to lamp to make a house. What other house can there be, only son? You are the only son of your father. How will you say it, seven plagues? Plague him to tell you the dates that are painted on black ink, bracket you. Remember why Juna burned her books on the sinking boat, because none of them prepared her for the moment in which she was asked to burn them. At the Dia Museum, after the Agnes Martin room, you walked past ruined continents and upended mountains, walked between gates of yarn to the dark spaces in the ground. Fanny said, this part is like hell. Who knows what hell is? A brick through the window of a house of worship? How can I care if I never went? The conflagration in the heart of a son who disappoints his parents? Scripture or rupture, you will never know. Paradise lies beneath this unsaid, 
black ink and white paint, ocean and gashing sky. On our way out of the museum, Fanny said, well, we should go back to the Agnes Martin room so we can end it in light. <laughs>